Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So in today's presentation, we're going to talk about a little known compound uh, like fisetin called quercetin. So without further ado, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this compound quercetin has to offer with regard to its anti-aging properties. Quercetin is sometimes called the head or master flavonoid. People have said it's one of the best natural antihistamines on the market. It can allegedly stabilize mast cells and reduce inflammation. A mast cell serves the same general function in the body as the central nervous system. Things such as affecting or regulating allergic responses, innate and adapted immunity, autoimmunity, and inflammation. Now there are links in the description below to all of the studies I used to compile this presentation. So what is quercetin? Well quercetin is a plant flavanol from the flavonoid group of polyphenols. It is one of the most abundant antioxidants in the diet and plays an important role in helping your body combat the free radical damage that has been linked to some chronic age-related diseases. Let's discuss quercetin as an antioxidant. Antioxidants are compounds that combine two and neutralize free radicals. Free radicals are unstable molecules that may cause cellular damage when their levels become too high. Damage caused by free radicals has been linked to numerous chronic conditions, including cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. In addition, its antioxidant properties may help reduce inflammation, allergic symptoms, and high blood pressure. Moving on, let's look at some food sources. Um, and listed here are some of the food sources that contain quercetin. Thankfully for me, at the bottom of the list are green tea and red wine. Let's now discuss inflammation. Free radicals may do more than simply damage our genes. Research has shown that high levels of free radicals may help activate genes that promote inflammation. Ergo, high levels of free radicals may lead to an increased inflammatory response. While a little inflammation is necessary to help our body heal and fight infections, persistent inflammation is linked to health problems, including certain cancers, as well as heart and kidney disease. Studies show that quercetin may help reduce inflammation. In test tube studies, quercetin reduced markers of inflammation in human cells, and these included molecules such as tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6. Both of these are pro-inflammatory cytokines. Let's now look at a scientific study on quercetin. An eight-week study of 50 women with rheumatoid arthritis observed that participants who took 500 milligrams of quercetin a day experienced a significant reduction in early morning stiffness, morning pain, and after activity pain. They also had reduced markers of inflammation, such as TNFA, compared to those who received a placebo. Now, while these findings are promising, much more human research is needed to fully understand the compound's potential anti-inflammatory properties. Let's now discuss allergies. Quercetin's potential anti-inflammatory properties may also provide allergy symptom relief. Test tube and animal studies found that it may block enzymes involved in inflammation and suppress inflammation-promoting chemicals such as histamine. For example, one study showed that taking quercetin supplements suppressed peanut-related anaphylactic reactions in mice. However, it's still unclear whether the compound has the same effect on allergies in humans so more research is needed before it can be recommended as an alternative treatment. Let's now talk about cancer. Quercetin may have anti-cancer effects because it has certain antioxidant properties. 
In a review of test human animal studies, quercetin was found to suppress cell growth and induce cell death in prostate cancer cells. Other test tube and animal studies observed that the compound had similar effects in liver, lung, breast, bladder, blood, colon, ovarian, lymphoid and adrenal cancer cells. Now although these findings are extremely promising, many more human studies are needed before quercetin can be recommended as an alternative treatment for cancer. Let's now move on to brain disorders. Quercetin may lower your risk of chronic brain disorders. Research suggests that quercetin's antioxidant properties may protect against brain disorders, such as Alzheimer's and dementia. In one study, mice with Alzheimer's disease received quercetin injections every two days for three months. By the end of the study, the injections had reversed several markers of Alzheimer's and the mice performed much better during learning tests. In another study, a quercetin-rich diet reduced the markers of Alzheimer's disease and improved brain function in the mice at the early to middle stage of the condition. However, the diet had little to no effect on animals with middle to late stage Alzheimer's disease. Coffee is a popular beverage and has been linked to lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. Again, research shows that quercetin, not caffeine, is the primary compound in coffee that is responsible for its potential protective effects against brain disorders. Though these findings are promising, more research is obviously still needed in humans. Let's now discuss blood pressure and that quercetin may also help reduce blood pressure. High blood pressure affects one in three American adults. It raises the risk of heart disease, and that is the leading cause of death in the United States. When mice with high blood pressure were given quercetin daily for five weeks, their systolic and diastolic blood pressure values decreased by an average of 18 and 23% respectively. A review of nine human studies in 580 people found that taking more than 500 milligrams of quercetin a day in supplement form reduced systolic and diastolic blood pressures by an average of 5.8 and 2.6 respectively. Again, although these findings are promising, more human studies are needed. Let's now talk about quercetin supplements. You can purchase quercetin as a dietary supplement. Indeed, do not age.org now do carry it in capsule form. Typical dosage range from 500 to 1000 milligrams per day. Unfortunately, on its own, quercetin has low bioavailability, which means our bodies absorb it poorly, which is why some supplements may include other compounds such as vitamin C or a digestive enzyme, as this may increase absorption. Additionally, some research indicates that quercetin has a synergistic effect when combined with other flavonoid supplements, such as resveratrol or genistein. So I think we need to talk about side effects. As quercetin is found naturally in many fruits and vegetables, it's deemed to be fairly safe. Generally, there are little to no side effects. However, in some instances, taking more than 1,000 milligrams per day may cause mild symptoms, such as headaches, stomach aches, and or tingling sensations. When consumed in food, quercetin is safe for pregnant women and for those who are breastfeeding. There are very few studies on the safety of quercetin as a supplement, so you should avoid taking it if you're pregnant or nursing. As with any supplement, please consult your healthcare provider before you start to take it, as this supplement can interact with some medications, including antibiotics and some blood pressure medications. So for those who are interested, let's see what do not age.org are offering. So they are selling 60 times 400 milligram capsules, uh, and that normally retails for 25 pounds sterling, which is $32.30. There's an introductory offer, which lowers that to 20 pounds sterling. So the price goes down to $25.80. Now, if you use the my NMN discount code, that will attract a further 10% discount. 
uh, and you will only pay 18 pounds sterling which is around $23.20 so overall a saving of around $9.10 well I hope you found that interesting or informative hopefully both um, a present I don't take quercetin although it is a supplement that I am thinking about introducing into my supplement stack I would be interested to hear from those of you that do take quercetin uh, in the comments below how much do you take how often do you take it and whether or not you've seen any benefits from taking quercetin so far well that's it for today I hope you enjoyed this video I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video um, as always take care and bye for now